Hey guys, guys, the TV here with another Path of Exile video, and in this one we're going to be talking about Aegis Aurora, as well as the changes to minions when it comes to fully supporting their crit playstyle. This means that we'll be looking into the Cyan Guardian as well as Necromancer playstyles for it, but I want to talk about mostly about Aegis Aurora, why it is so ridiculously broken. The TLDR of this video is essentially that low budget builds will not be using crit whatsoever for their minion builds, but at, because of how broken Aegis Aurora is, we are able to be looking into removing bone offering through a couple of different mechanics to allow us to run spirit offering, which could potentially make us able to scale crit for the higher budget builds. But this video will be focusing on the Aegis Aurora. If you like this video when you're done watching it, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and um, you know leave a comment below what you guys think of this. So basically, the Aegis Aurora, why it is so broken compared to a regular 5% recovery of life or 5% recovery of energy shield is obviously the first fact that this shield gives you a ton of armor as well as energy shield, and it replenishes 2% of your armor when you block. Now, I'm going to give you guys a couple of different examples of this kind of character. First off, this character is using a mage build, and I will simulate how it would look without it with some flask setup, what would happen in situations when you're really tanky. But first off, on the higher end, this build is replenishing 2% of your armor when you block 2% of 60,000 uh, is 1,200 uh, energy shield. This means that every time you block, you replenish 1,200 energy shield. My current character has a grand total of 7,742 energy shield. If I were to replenish 5% of this, uh, I would replenish 387 energy shield on block. So the Aegis Aurora is already going three times higher recovery per block than that of a normal regular rare shield. This is one of the main reasons higher body mini builds will not even consider using the minion related shield because the recovery rate from the Aegis Aurora is just vastly superior. The other aspect of this is because of the Divine Shield, which is 3% of physical damage preventive from hits is recently regenerated as energy shield per second, which gives us thousands of energy shield per second regenerated on top of the replenish, simply because the shield also provides us with a ton of armor. So everything we have so far is screaming how broken Aegis Aurora is. But how broken is it really? Now... The way we normally do this is by not running the glancing blows because builds that do run glancing blows normally have ways to sustain their energy shield through the form of leeching or hive regeneration and then what we do is we cap our block chance to in this case have a little over cap on attack and completely on the cap with spell block. So if I run into a map like this, this map has... 100% uh, excess fire, 100% excess cold, two additional uh, exiles, poison hit on CI, so that doesn't matter. All we're gonna do is keep the bone offering up, and I'm gonna see if I can find a pack of enemies to literally just sit in. So here's a pack of harbingers to see if these will be enough. So in this case, I want to get my uh, my bone offering up, please. There it is. And then we can sit in. As you can see, we have 60,000 armor, and as you can see, the block is just completely covering the end of this very smoothly. They're even dying to my Tempest Shield. This is a hilarious amount of defense. However, this doesn't make me mortal. This just makes it extremely unlikely that I will take enough hits consecutively that I do not block that will kill me. It's extremely unlikely. It can happen, but extremely unlikely. The other aspect of this is that every time I block, I take zero damage because of this. However, there's a ton of investments made to make this happen. If I spec into Glancing Blows, what instead will happen is that the blocks I'm doing is suddenly going to deal, um, is suddenly going to deal 65% uh, of their damage, and instead I have to make sure that I am sustaining the amount of damage that I'm taking, even when I'm blocking. And this is where the Aegis Aurora is really good in combination with Divine Shield, which will require a ton of armor. But as mentioned earlier in the video, I am wearing a Mage Blood. We have 60,000 armor. So what I'm going to do to simulate having lower gear, lower armor. Let me find a bigger pack of enemies to hit me, actually. I'm going to turn off my Granite Flask. I'm going to be down to about 39,000 armor instead. And this is with the Glancing Blows. Keep in mind that we can still die if we get unlucky consecutive hits. So I'm going to take away this Flask, which will bring us down to about 39,000 armor. And if we have 39,000 armor, the efficiency of both Aegis Aurora as well as Divine Shield will drastically be lower and we'll be simulating more of a medium budget build that is using Aegis Aurora. So I'm taking this away 
39,000 armor, and as you can see, the defensive layer still feels very good, but as you can see, every now and then, I am dropping lower because of glancing blows, making me take damage 65% of the blocked hits as well. Now, another aspect of this is obviously that this amount of armor should be very easy to reach even with the nerfed state of Defiance Banner, which also presents us with a situation where it is buffed on the end of us taking less crits. As you can see, we're actually dropping very low. Normally, you shouldn't be sitting like this in a pack of enemies with a build like this, especially not having any other sustain outside of recovery and block. Eventually, during this video, I will die doing this. Unless my Tempest Shield actually clears off enough enemies before that happens. Um, so essentially what I'm talking about with this is how broken Aegis Aurora really is with the lower amount of armor as 39,000 which you can very easily achieve on a medium body build or just you know, simple investments. The problem of course is you can't really reliably use glancing blows with a build like this unless you're using an Aegis Aurora. So for builds that don't even sustain, there we go, we finally died. So even for builds that are using um, no way of having no way of sustaining their energy shield through the form of, for example, leeching, can actually go into glancing blows. This means that for a build that is going into the block cap, can actually go in and pick up glancing blows either through the thread of hope jewel from here, or actually specking into it, or maybe even taking these block nodes if need be can put the investment that has been made to get to the block cap, which in this case would be about 30, uh, 37%, right? 37 or 38% chance to block for attack and spells because the glancing blows doubles it. All of the investment between that point and block, block cap can then instead be invested elsewhere. One way for us to achieve this is actually to run Tempest Shield. Now, Tempest Shield has a pretty low reservation, but that's one of the things we're using to increase our spell block, which gives a shock immunity. But if you're running pure developments, you can get ailment immunity, and you, you, can, you can completely ignore running Tempest Shield simply because Glancing Blows can cap yourself to do this. This is, again, only for the higher budget builds, or at least medium budget builds, but the problem with this, or the, the overpowered part with this, is the availability of going glancing blows, which allows you to take the investments that is between 37% chance to block to put elsewhere. So if I take away, for example, this entire cluster, my block chance is 72-72. That's without glancing blows. That means I can still remove blocks. So if I take away all of these nodes, I'm down to 66-64. Okay, but how about we turn off the big thing, which is why we're looking into this. And that is turning off the bone offering without bone offering i am now down to 40 percent block and 39 spell block if i take away these two nodes i'm 31 so i probably will take those two i'm over capped with glint glancing blows at this point and i don't have any extra investments outside of watch side with extra block chance from determination but take that away i'm down to 32 percent block and 39 spell block okay seems kind of fair right so if i then do this and i spec into glancing blows we're almost capped. At this point, I can literally take the resistance nodes and chance to block attack damage and even pick this node up if I so wish to, and that might allow me to take away some of these nodes. At least the Mystic Bulwark can only take up the small one if I even care about that. This would have present me with pretty much block cap with one, two, three, and four specific nodes plus the traveling nodes instead of an entire cluster, a Watcher's Eye Jewel, the three invested plus the mastery, plus the extra Mystic Bulwark. There's so many points that I'm saving that I am now able to invest into modifiers that would help sustain this defensive layer, such as higher energy shield for the recovery. But in this case, we're using armor as our main source of mitigation or re of actual sustain, which means that things like Sanctum of Thought, Mastery to defend with increased armor on low energy shield would be a new, nice way to do it. Reduced effect of curses can be doing that as well if you want to. But Divine Shield and the, Divine, and the Aegis Aurora allows us to scale from this from armor, which means we can put investments towards that and just straight up generic high, high more energy shield to make up for the lack of this. But most importantly, this allows us to still have a build that can sustain the EHP of your character by switching the block modifiers into actual defensive layers or EHP increasing modifiers, such as in this case, armor or just straight up energy shield. And because of that, 
we can change our bone offering into a spirit offering and the spirit offering will allow us for minion builds to actually perform with a crit based focused build this literally presents us with a situation in the current state of the game that we're about to see in 3.19 that we're going to be able to actually support crit to some degree by simply removing some sort of defensive layers and switching those around to be sustained and elsewhere and that allows us to switch to bone offering but again this is only possible for higher budget builds with the use of the overpowered Aegis Aurora now I said this before the patch notes I was hoping Aegis Aurora would be gutted so that minion builds would be feeling more inclined to use an actual minion related shield but because of these changes with Aegis Aurora not being touched we still want to go Aegis Aurora and it seems to be the best way or potentially the only way for us to actually use uh, spirit offering because the other choices is to switch the ascendancy to a slightly inferior version of guardian on most bills i haven't checked all the bills yet but the mo the ones that i consider to be meta is going to be played as a necromancer and the guardian is slightly behind which can be sustained through bastion of hope instead of bone offering and if you go with a scion which is even slightly behind guardian is giving a mistress of sacrifice which means we're again forced to use the bone offering strategy to get the block unless we do the glancing blow strategy so I just wanted to make a video of how broken Aegis Aurora is and why I also believe that it should be nerfed because it's such an insane amount of layer of defense for very little investments because you can reach 40,000 armors even with Alta Divine's banner with a half-assed kind of gear. It's not a problem and the investment requirements to reach this with glancing blows and sustaining that even without having the um, sustain and it's having that survivability is beyond insane in my opinion i don't want to prolong this video too long hope you guys enjoyed it let me know what you think about it in the comments below if you watch this long i appreciate that it helps the youtube algorithm don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe that also helps the channel a lot till next time boys as always stay safe keep rocking